May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please be seated. <clears throat> Good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you who have gathered here this morning. This is God's house and God is the one who welcomes you. And also to those who will be watching later on on our online service, again, it's good to have you join us wherever you have gathered. But remember, this is a place of grace, not perfection. And everyone, everyone is welcome. The psalmist writes, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all of them, and the Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. So to all who gather this morning, whether you're feeling overwhelmed, come for the Lord is here. If you're surrounded with anguish and feeling trapped, come for the Lord is here. Whether you're confused and not sure where to turn to, come for the Lord is here. Call and the Lord will answer. So let us begin our worship this morning by singing our opening hymn, hymn number 198, Let Us Build a House. Thank you.
Let us speak with God in prayer. Let us pray. All knowing God, the creator of all things, we come before the throne of grace to worship you. We acknowledge that you can do all things and no purpose of yours can be thwarted. It is you who deliver us from fear. It is you who listen when we call. It is you who saves us from all our troubles. Today we come because you have invited us to come. Our lips declare your praise and we have come to exalt your name together. But Lord, we confess that on many occasions we have failed to call on you. We have trusted our own strength and failed to give you your place. Forgive our stubbornness. So Lord, we ask that you change and renew us. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of life and for the gift of family and friends. We give you thanks for your provisions and for your guidance in our lives. And we are grateful for the many moments in our lives when we have called you on your name and you have answered us. Just as you heard Job, he called upon your name. And we know too well that you will continue to hear our prayers. So we thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. Good morning. Good to see you all this morning. Anyone got any news that you want, want to share with anybody? Anything at all? Nothing? Good. Good, good. Sorry, our kids had glow sticks this morning. So we got a bit of paper there. Anyway, I want, to, I want to ask you a question this morning again. I want you to think about um, films that you watch or novels or books that you read. Okay, and I want you to think about the, the type of genre that you watch. Okay, now raise your hands if you enjoy horror movies. You do, Connie. Well done. I'm oh, Billy at the back. I'm too fear. Eddie, I, I I'm fear. I am fear. Anybody like happy ending movies? Oh, what? I can't, oh, they're too sickly sweet, aren't they? They are, they are a happy ending movie. Yeah, yeah. Chip, is it, they called chick flicks? Is that what they're called, aren't they? Anybody like sad movies? Yeah, I cry. Honestly, I, I'm a crier. I, I must confess. Uh, I do cry. Um, but what did I watch recently? It made me cry. And it was a rotten movie as well. Dear John. We've seen that, but it's a, it's based on the book Nicholas Spark. Oh, oh, it is, it's, it's a lovely movie, it is, but it's a bit sickly sweet. But it did make me cry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do like Magic Mike, but we'll, we'll go there. <laughs> but I do, I do like action movies. I must confess, I do like action movies. And it's very much like, like if you're a reader... Um, as well, there, there's, there's various types of books that you, you like. The Murder Mysteries... Um, the, the Mills and Boons, do you still get them? Do you? I don't know. Anyway, um, I like thrillers. I like, I like the suspense books that you're not quite sure what's going to happen. But I don't really like the, the, like the Snow White and the, seven, the Happy Ending, the princess books. I can't be doing with that. I really can't be doing with that, right? But the reason that you must be thinking, where is she going with this this morning? But the reason I'm thinking about... The happy endings or the, the kind of endings that you expect is in the book of Job. And you'll be glad to know this will be the last, the last, <laughs> the last week that we're looking at this. We're bringing it all together this week. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm like, yes, yes. Honest to goodness, it's been, a, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge even trying to write a sermon for it. But anyway, so we've come to the end of the book of Job and it's a happy ending. Or is it? Right, now... 
in the book of Job, which Helen is going to read for us, brings it all together. And we see that despite everything that Job has experienced, Job's, Job's answers, uh, prayers are answered uh, in, in many ways. And, and so that becomes a happy ending. And we all do like a happy ending in our own lives. But the reality is of life is not always a happy ending. It's not a happy ending. It's how do we deal with that? How do we, how do we get up every morning? How do we rely on our faith to get us through every day when we know that it's not a happy ending? And that's the challenge for us as people of faith. We think, we think it's going to be a happy ending and, and actually it's not. And one of the challenges for us is, is especially when it comes to prayer, because we, 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 we are people of faith and we, we pray, and, and there's times when the prayers that we ask are not answered, yet we see other people's prayers are answered. And there, there is that question of, what about me? What, what happened to my prayers? Where's my happy ending? And the reality is, uh, for many of us, the, we don't always get the happy ending that we, we, we wish. We'll have an ending, but we won't always get the, 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 the ending that we pray for. Um, and that's always a challenge, especially in things when relationships are breaking up, when job situations um, are, are finishing off and you're, you're, being, you're, you're facing redundancy and various things like that. But the reality is life is hard. Life is a challenge. Um, and, and Job's book is, is one of these ones that we can turn to all the time. Um, but there is an ending of some kind. And, th and that's the, the courage. The courage is, is to get up every morning and, and to face what lies ahead of us. But the, the, end, the happy ending in the book of Job and the happy ending for all of us is that God is always there. And if that's the only thing that we can take from the book of Job, please take that to know that no matter what storms you're facing, no matter what life is bringing you, whatever prayers that you pray, whatever ending that you, you, you have to deal with, God is always there. And the storms and the silence and the whirlwind, and the, the quiet times, God is always there. So whatever you face over the, the coming weeks and months ahead, just know that whatever storm you're facing, whatever joy you're facing and celebrating, that in, that, in those moments, God will always be there. So that's the only thing I want you to take, if that's the only thing you take away with that, is just know that no matter what happens, God is there. So we're going, to, we're going to sing hymn number 547, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs>
This morning's reading is taken from the last chapter of Job, Job chapter 42, and this can be found on page 535 of the Pew Bible. Job chapter 42, beginning at verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord, I know, Lord, that you are all-powerful, that you can do everything you want. You ask, how dare I question your wisdom when I am so very ignorant? I talked about things I did not understand, about marvels too great for me to know. You told me to listen while you spoke and to try to answer your questions. In the past, I knew only what others had told me, but now I have seen you with my own eyes, so I am ashamed of all I have said and repent in dust and ashes. And then from verse 10. Then after Job had prayed for his three friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had had before. All Job's brothers and sisters and former friends came to visit him and feasted, him, uh, feasted with him in his house. They expressed their sympathy and comforted him for all the troubles the Lord had brought on him. Each of them gave him some money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the last part of Job's life even more than he had blessed the first. Job owned 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 2,000 head of cattle, and 1,000 donkeys. He was the father of seven sons and three daughters. He called the eldest daughter Jemima, the second Kezia, and the youngest Keren Hapach. There were no other women in the whole world as beautiful as Job's daughters. Their father gave them a share of the inheritance along with their brothers. Job lived 140 years after this, long enough to see his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And then he died at a very great age. Amen. Thank you, Helen. Let us pray. God, who hears when people call out to you, hear our prayers for others. Loving God, there is so much despair in a world, and for many there seems so little reason to hope. Reach out to all whose belief in the future has been destroyed. Reach out to those who are weighed down by the stresses and strains of daily life. Reach out to those who long for peace of mind, who crave rest for their souls but cannot find it. Speak to each one in your still small voice. Grant them your peace which passes all understanding, that quiet confidence which only you can bring, so that their burdens be lifted and souls refreshed. We pray for your church, that it may be your hands and feet in our communities. And we ask that you stir the hearts of those in positions of authority to make provisions that seek to address inequalities. Encourage governments to end poverty and repression. We call on you today to hear the prayers of those that are afflicted, in need or oppressed. We ask that you hear our prayers for the vulnerable members of our society, that they may find support and care. We ask that individuals and families struggle to deal with financial challenges may find help and aid. And so we pray for the needs of our communities in which we live 
and serve. Comfort those who are mourning the passing of loved ones. Help us to make a space to call home for those that are lonely. And we pray for those who feel overwhelmed that they may find rest in you. So loving God, in this silence we bring to you our concerns and the concerns of those dear to us. So Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, we offer all those prayers in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing hymn number 493. It's me, O Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. For you are a strength and a redeemer. Amen. Five-year-old Evan told his daddy he'd like to have a baby brother. 
If you pray every day for two months for a baby brother, I bet that God will give you one, his dad said. Evan prayed every night for a whole month, but after a month he got tired and quit. Eight months later, his now pregnant mother went into labour. It was twins. Evan's dad looked down at him and said, now aren't you glad you prayed? And Evan hesitated a little and then said, yes, but aren't you glad I quit when I did? <laughs> if there was any biblical character in scripture that had every reason to resign from life, to quit and live forever in total resentment for the rest of their days, it was Job. For Job, albeit being a godly man, his story was an unfolding drama of unbelievable trouble. Trials, tragedy and tribulation. His life had been shaken to the core. He'd seen the threshold of death and destruction and his life hurts. Those hurts like ours cannot be undone. They are written on the pages of our lives. Those lost moments, those heartaches, Headaches and memories of the past will live with us for the rest of our lives. But in the midst of this despair, despair, this darkness, we must always remember that God is in the restoration business. God, Job understood that God was not oblivious to his pain. That God goes beyond empathy. God understands the root causes of our troubles. God sees the hidden factors that contribute to our struggles. And God understands the societal pressures, the family dynamics, the personal insecurities, and the spiritual battles that underlie our troubles. In Job's case, God restored his fortunes, gave him twice as much as he had before, and blessed the latter part of his life more than the former part. It was for Job a happy ever after moment. It is a happy after, after moment that we all long for in our own lives. That Job is saved and so is a sigh of relief kind of moment. But is that the case? Is that the end of the story? So here is something to ponder on. Most scholars believe that verse 7 to 17 of chapter 42 at the end of this book, which showed Job getting everything back, was amended by an editor who thought something was missing. Instead of finishing on that verse, therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. For the editor, it may be it was just too painful to read that story without a happy ever after ending and so edited the story to make a feel-good ending. But what if in reality that there was a man like Job? A man who suffered. A man who never got his life restored. Who never got his happy ending. Would we even consider reading this book knowing that? I don't think so. If truth be told, we all want a happy ending we want restoration. That's why we keep reading the book of Job in the hope that Job was restored. That is why I have been wrestling with these passages over the last few weeks. I too want that happy ending. Yet for many of us who are going through trials and periods of suffering, what happens to us and our happy endings? What happens to us when our world is falling apart around us? What happens to us when we don't get the results we want in the end? What about the people who do wrong things yet never get punished? What if the pain of loss, betrayal, heartache never goes away? What if we lose everything and never get it back? What then? I'm reminded by the pastor and theologian, the Reverend Amy Butler, who reminds us that God has in many ways a preferential love for those who are suffering. She's saying that when your suffering continues, when you can never lay down the burden you carry, when there is no rational or definitive explanation for your suffering, God has a special tender place to hold you. 
The special love for those in pain exists not because those of us who suffer are necessarily better than others or more holy or morally correct because when we suffer, we are living in a situation contrary to the way God originally set up the way things are meant to be. When we suffer God's salvation, our faith doesn't always mean having our fortune restored to us. It might, in fact, mean that our Job story might end in verse 6. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Yet our salvation, God's salvation, lies in the knowledge that God understands our suffering that God is right there with us, silent or speaking, angry or tender, that we are forgiven and restored. And maybe we can smile to think that God's greatness flows around our incompleteness, around our restlessness. His rest, fortunes restored or not, we can be assured of God's forgiveness, God's tenderness and love. It's true that we might not receive what we hope for to be restored to us. But we cannot ignore the fact that today Job did get everything back. That's what the Bible says, the Lord restored the fortunes of Job. To many of us, Job may have got everything that he asked for. But we already know that God does not reward or punish us in response to our actions. We can't gain God's favour or manipulate God to get the response we like. The whole book of Job is about that very thing. Undeserved suffering and now even undeserved favour from God. And we see that in this passage, Job is restored. His friends, his family return, his fortunes are re-established. He is feasting. They show him sympathy. They comfort him. Yet where was Job's friends when he needed them? When he was going through tough times? Maybe the memory of their unfaithfulness remained the bitter taste in Job's mouth. And maybe Job needed to see that to realise that his security was not amongst his friends, but rather through God. Maybe we need to be reminded about that, that people's let us down all the time. I let people down. We all let people down because we are human. We all suffer. We all struggle. And life throws curveballs all the time. But it's only God that will provide that ongoing source of presence and comfort. That is God's salvation. Even when it feels that we have nothing, God has a plan for our lives. God will provide for his people and we are reminded that what we need all along along is blind trust in God's providence, not a whole lot of stuff. And we see that Job's family is restored to him. For many of us, we never know or can imagine the pain of losing your whole family. And so we understand the editor trying to tie up things nicely to give us that happy ending. Yet we know that the loss of loved ones will linger on. That we cannot cover that pain up. That aching loss will never go away. There is no bandaging of that wound. The memories of the lost family will always linger. Yet through the support of his new family, Job was able to face each day with his memories etched within him. For Job, God's salvation was the ability to live life with the knowledge that even in spite of such loss, God was there. That God was there. God's salvation is not the erasing of relationships and pain and loss, but the courage to go on living life even in spite of the loss and grief. But the book of Job ends at verse 17. And we read that Job died old and full of days, not that Job died happily ever after. Job lived a long life, 
full of days, full of everything that makes up our existence. Things like pain and grief, loss and sorrow, and so many questions. Job died living with God's salvation. He was not saved from his pain, but rather he was saved from his alienation from God. Job was no longer enslaved to himself or that happiness comes from having things. Job died being able to say, thy will be done. And Job really meant that. Maybe, just maybe, that is what we need to hear. That although we all won't always get our happy ever endings, we will never be isolated from God. When there is no place to run to, when all we can do is trundle along step by step, no matter the depth of our pain, the amount we have lost, the burden we still carry, God is ready to hear us. God is ready to save us. God is there no matter the depth of our suffering. It might not what want what we experience or what we expect, but God is there. And we know God is there because God did not give up on Job. And God does not give up on us. If you've ever been to Winchester Cathedral, you'll have no doubt stood and looked up at the cathedral's west window. During the English Civil War, the window suffered extensive damage to the point where its original design was completely lost. Oliver Cromwell's soldiers stormed into the cathedral on horseback and wrecked the window. And when the soldiers left, the townspeople came around and picked up as much of the glass as they could find. They stored it all in boxes tucked safely under their beds. And during the restoration after the Civil War, the thousands of pieces of broken glass were recovered and the window painstakingly repaired. The result was a beautiful abstract mosaic window which can be seen even to this very day. The window doesn't have any images representing stories from the Bible as it once did, but it tells a story. It tells a story about a war and of people putting broken things back together. And maybe there's still a spiritual message in it for us. Perhaps it's a metaphor for life and teaches us that no matter how shattered things seem, they can still be put back together. They might not look like they did before, but they can still be beautiful. The book of Job is just that. A story of salvation. Rediscovered through the brokenness of an individual. A story of taking all the shattered pieces of our lives and assembling them into something whole and new and beautiful under the watchful, ever-present eye of God, who will never abandon us to our own suffering. So maybe, just maybe, that is our happy ever after moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one true God now and forevermore. Amen. We are going to continue worship by making our offering. And as the offering is brought forward, we'll remain seated and we'll sing, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So let's make our offering.
let us pray. Loving and giving God, we come with gladness in our hearts, for we know comfort and peace. Receive our thanksgiving with this offering which is given to reflect your glory, so that the light of your son's church might continue to shine in the world. So loving God, accept these offerings, we pray. Amen. We have these intimations. There will be tea and coffee in the large hall after this service and everyone is welcome. And if you can help with this, please put your name on the list on the small hall door. For the next few weeks, Tradecraft Christmas cards will be on sale in the large hall after morning worship. The concert celebrating our 150th anniversary is at three o'clock today here in the sanctuary. Please do come along and support it. The walking group will be out and about tomorrow, weather permitting. If you fancy stretching your legs, why not join us? We meet in the church car park at 10.30. The Monday club meets tomorrow from 2 until 3.30, and this will be a sing-along. The guild meets on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. The topic is Scotland's greatest female explorer with Liz McIntyre Allen. The Guild are also holding a fundraiser fashion sale on Tuesday the 12th of November at 7.30pm. Tickets priced £3 are available from Guild members. The Community Cafe is open on Friday. Why not come along and join us for a bowl or two of, tea, of soup, tea, coffee and home baking? Everyone is welcome. We have established a bereavement support group and this will meet on the 30th of October at 7pm in the side sanctuary. And again, all are welcome. And finally, it's sad to announce the death of Mrs. Margaret Craig, whose funeral will take place this Wednesday at three o'clock at Daldawi. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family at this sad time. These are all the intimations. Thank you, Jim. So before we bring our service to a close, can I, as you heard this afternoon, today from Jim there that we're having our concert, the, the people have been working really hard, so please, um, if you're able, come along and support them, um, it will be a good afternoon, and, and you can bring some friends, because you've all got friends, so come along, three o'clock here, and there's tea, coffee, is there tea, coffee? There's, there's a goodie bag, so there you are, you're in for a treat. Um, so if you're able to come along this afternoon, please do so, um, because you're in for a treat. I, I've had a sneak preview. Um, so and it's good fun. So they have been working really hard. hard. So that is something to do this afternoon. Um, and also, I do hope you have a, a good week. Um, and, and remember that whatever you face, that God is always with you. So we're going to bring our service to a close by saying a closing hymn, hymn number 519. Love divine, or oh love excelling.
So now go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you, those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love now and forevermore.